signs you're recovering from anxiety plus some words of my true self. One, you're not letting little things get in your way so much. I get that it sounds really woo-woo, but a lot of anxiety is caused by turning molehills into mountains. Now, yes, I get it that it sounds really woo-woo, but hear me out on this one. So, a lot of mental health professionals refer to what many people would think of as just turning molehills into mountains. As a, uh, as a cognitive dissonance known as catastrophizing. A good way to define catastrophizing would be um, when somebody jumps to really unlikely but catastrophic scenarios from situations that should imply such in a pragmatic manner. So like, let's say that somebody makes a minor mistake at work and then their mind just starts spinning on that they're going to get fired or somebody thinks that they have a really serious health condition from a minor symptom that would be catastrophizing as well so if you find that you're not letting your mind run to really catastrophic scenarios so much or you're not letting those you know little things you know ruin a, an entire day when it would really just be a momentary notice that's a sign that recovery has begun. Two, you're not worshiping your thoughts. Now, this goes hand in hand with when I referred to in a previous video, a coping mechanism that I referred to as name it to tame it. This is strongly correlated to what I'm talking about now. Ultimately, one of the core aspects of recovery is taking your mind for what it's worth, realizing that it's just that, a mind. Yes, your mind matters. Yes, it's real. But we just can't let it matter beyond everything else because your mind is just that, a mind. Just because it's not tangible, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So ultimately, if we want to progress, we will do what it takes to abide by this realization while still going through our lives in a mindful but conducive manner. Three, you're accomplishing more. So your associates may have been commenting on, you know, how productive have you been? You've been finding it easier to stick to your plans and goals and all around the, you know, upsides to what you have been accomplished have been easier for you to seem to find and take with you basically. This can be hard for some people to see basically because well um, fish don't notice water because it's there all the time so if you let yourself marinate in negativity for so long it can almost seem to start to become part of your being but ultimately it is up to us to wake up and see through that altered lens that may have been put upon us by nature or nurture. Kind of goes back to what Isaac Newton said, energy can't really be created or destroyed. So I could make this connection to what I'm discussing us here because ultimately time will go by if we use it effectively or not, or should I say in the most productive manner. Time will pass regardless of what not, so it is up to us to make the best use of it. There's a big difference between being busy and being productive. Busy ultimately just means we're getting things done, whereas being productive, you are putting that action towards practical use. It is as much of a slippery slope as the difference between efficient and effective. Four, you are seeing improvements in physical symptoms. Now, anxiety can be strongly correlated to many physical symptoms like sweating, numbness, tingling, dizziness, insomnia, poor concentration, loss of appetite, or even hyper or hypoglycemic type symptoms. Now, back to the numbness, I remember Trey Jones said in a video where he had that numbness sensation too, and that was kind of a like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy type of moment because I would get these numbness in almost these really odd, like specific areas. Like um, there was this time where 
I actually got numb like around here like my under eye to like almost to the temple area and my gosh it was so weird basically it kind of like caught me off guard and I would even like touch it to try and see if I could um, get any sensation in there. I will admit I once accidentally done, done this in front of somebody I knew. It was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> This in turn was kind of a relief for me. Another thing that has really struck out to me would be the heart palpitations I've gotten. Sometimes my heart would just pound for hours straight on end, and other times it would seem to pound at the spasically at the most random times. Now, I know Trey Jones have said that he's experienced similar things as to I did. Um, now, I know Trey Jones has referred to this stemming from your subconscious suspecting something is a threat when your conscious self isn't quite ready for it. Now, that makes a lot of sense because I found that the heart pounding would start in moments where I would like focus really intently on something. From all the information I've gathered, it would be fair to say that that was caused by my subconscious interpreting a threat when my conscious self wasn't quite on the same page as my subconscious. So if you find that these sporadic symptom episodes aren't happening as frequently, then you're likely moving towards a the recovery process. Five, you find that you can enjoy the little things more, so you can sit back and enjoy that cup of coffee, or um, just feel the oomph of that song that you've been craving or just to be in the moment and feel that sense of accomplishment in whatever you've just accomplished. Now, I get that doing this um, is so simple yet I wouldn't say not necessarily easy, at least not for everyone. From what I've observed, there seems to be three types of people. Um, one, People who are always thinking in one way or another. Two, um, people who just seem to be in the moment and not really thinking of anything. And three, people who seem to flip between the two modes. Now, I would say I'm someone who most strongly lines up with the first one. I will admit, and even I notice that thinking seems to be the killer of much happiness. But I find that the more you take notice of it, the easier it can get to assimilate that. So if you're working on it and you're progressing, then that should be a kudos. Aside from the meat of this video, I will admit I am not at all someone who has it all to gather. Last time I tried to make a video, my camera fell off the stand three times. Um, the last week at work, my shaking hands made it hard to carry something to a co-worker. My subconscious randomly went berserk when my conscience wasn't quite on the same page. Yesterday, while I was packing away groceries, I had a random flashback that, that lasted for about five minutes, and I somehow managed to carry myself back to where I was going right after it finished. My point is that... I don't have it all together. I'm still learning just like the rest of us. I would say the last six months have been a distinct stage in my relationship with my anxiety that has been here on and off for the last four years. Many don't have the best understanding of what recovery really means. Ultimately, recovery is a process, not a destination. So there should be more focused on the how rather than the why if you really want to apply this principle really well. So yes, your accomplishments, they matter, take notice of them, but the how should be up on higher up on importance than the why. So if you find that you're getting more things done and it doesn't just seem like you're just barely holding your head above water, then you're likely where you should be in the recovery process in this moment. So hopefully the take home from this little bit should be to have focused more on the how rather than the why. I would really strongly suggest, you know, making a little mental note of that. So that would be what Bakeway has to offer for today. So